GoPro have invested millions of dollars to digitally stabilize video captured by the Hero 7 by cropping part of the frame, calling their latest iteration HyperSmooth. Instead of relying on software stabilization, DJI have pushed forward with perfecting their motorized solutions, resulting in the release of the world's smallest handheld 3-axis gimbal stabilized camera, the DJI Osmo Pocket. Having previously taken a close look at the Osmo handheld system, DJI have been back to the drawing board yet again, taking what they've learnt with their latest drone systems and providing us with their smallest 3-axis gimbal yet. Better still, it's cheaper than the flagship GoPro Hero 7. Special thanks to Heliguy.com for getting this rather small package out to me so quickly. Pretty amazing that there's a stabilised gimbal system in here, but crack open that box and we get to an impressively compact device. At only 122mm in length and weighing in at just 4 ounces thanks to that high quality yet lightweight plastic construction, the unit is small yet feels robust and relatively weighty in the hand. Definitely a premium feel overall. It's certainly pocketable even when it's inserted into the included carry case which we'll come back to shortly. At the top we find the 3 axis gimbal system compensating for the operator's movements and keeping the camera perfectly poised to take the smoothest shot possible. Help by a new algorithm that increases the control accuracy ensuring it can move at a faster pace of 120 degrees per second. Nevertheless, these hold the main camera body, a 1 2.3 inch CMOS sensor with an f2 lens producing a maximum video resolution of 4K at 60 frames per second, and that's at 100 megabits per second too, something even DJI's Mavic drones can't do just yet. Although you won't get the super wide angle shots of the Mavic, the pocket is limited at 80 degrees but at least you won't get any of the distortion that comes with such wide angle lenses either. Moving down we have the main body which feels quite nice with a rubberized texture to stop it from slipping out of your hand. It's not the most ergonomically comfortable hand grip but still comfortable enough to hold and operate for long periods of time. On the bottom we find a single USB type C port used to charge the built in battery which is not user replaceable. Next to this we find one of two microphone pinholes, the second being up by the main controls and facing the operator, perfect for the vloggers out there. Talking of controls, there's not many of them, two buttons to be precise. One used to power cycle the unit as well as switch between modes and the other to start or stop capture. Just above we have a status LED and off to the side is a micro SD card slot. Cards up to 256GB in capacity being supported, although one is not supplied within the package so you'll need to provide your own. Finally, if things weren't compact enough already, DJI have managed to squeeze in a small touch sensitive display. Obviously not large enough to set focal points, but for framing your shots or changing settings it's a welcome addition. Press that power button and within 5 seconds the gimbal is initialised and ready to shoot, ensuring you won't miss any of the action. That rare screen comes alive and to be fair it's rather sharp, easily bright and clear enough to frame your shots with clear resolution, battery life and memory card status indicators around the main preview image. Better still, as mentioned, it's touch sensitive too and with different swiping gestures we open different menus. So a swipe from the bottom displays various gimbal settings such as gimbal speed, recentering and changing gimbal modes, as well as flipping the camera into its selfie mode. Slide in from the right to change the current active shooting mode, and then further still to set options for that mode while a swipe down from the top allows you to enter general system settings, so a very easy unit to navigate, perfect for beginners and those new to gimbal systems, while also placing everything you need at your fingertips for quick and easy adjustment. You'll get used to a couple of shortcuts as you use the gimbal too, allowing you to cycle through shooting modes on the fly, with a double tap recentering the gimbal, and a triple tap entering the selfie mode. The button has a satisfying tactile click too with good feedback. Gimbal modes include the default follow mode which moves with you and smooths out your uneven movements. Gimbal lock mode keeps the camera locked in its current horizontal position. And a new FPV mode follows your every tilt, turn and rotation to mimic an action camera, all working wonderfully well. One feature DJI cleverly integrated into the Osmo Pocket is revealed by removing a small plastic door. 
This port can be used to attach various accessories, expanding the unit's capabilities even further, although alongside the pocket users receive a smartphone adapter, one USB-C and one Lightning, which slides into place, providing the ability to now connect the device to your smartphone, and with the DJI MIMO app installed, you'll receive a nice large live preview, perfect for framing and setting focal points. Here we have quick access to a joypad to move the gimbal around, and a quick recenter option. And all modes are beside the shutter button on the right side. We can also change all the standard settings we've seen on the device itself, as well as enter the Pro menu which will unlock some manual settings, providing those more comfortable with videography the option to shoot in a more manual fashion. As the pocket is so small and light, there's no other support needed other than the small connection to your smartphone. It does hold in place rather firm and makes the entire package even more comfortable to hold and shoot with. Better still, unplug the pocket and you're back to shooting with the unit itself and still have access to all settings and features through the built-in display. You can even rotate the connector around when not required to save it from catching on anything else. And things keep on getting better when performance is concerned. As mentioned, within seconds you're ready to shoot. Gimbal performance seems spot on, nice quick yet smooth movements that counteract any bumps and shakes from your person. Best of all, we have none of the drawbacks of digital image stabilisation here. Unlike GoPro's Hero 7, you can make big movements and your footage will almost always look buttery smooth. The three-axis gimbal on the Osmo Pocket works by measuring gyro data just like the GoPro, but instead of using the data for digital stabilisation, it's used to drive the three motors on the gimbal, and it works fantastically well. Note that this is a handheld system in its raw form. Unfortunately, there's no tripod thread or any other way to mount this to an object or to your person, although with some added accessories we can add remote functionality, a waterproof case, even the ability to blend the system into the very popular GoPro mounting ecosystem. We'll take a look at these options in future videos. As for image quality, no issues there either. 4K at 60 is smooth and sharp, colours are vivid, and although the weather wasn't on my side here, the image is sharp and true to life. For the general hobbyist, or even for the prosumer, this seems a perfect companion. Unlike the Hero 7 Black, which tends to expose based on the whole scene, the Osmo Pocket tends to expose the scene based on whatever is in the centre. This isn't really a good or bad thing, just what I noticed and something to bear in mind while shooting. The field of view is completely different to most action cameras too, so it's hard to objectively measure things like sharpness, but the Osmo Pocket does seem a tad sharper than the GoPro to me. Since it has a large aperture lens, it also makes for some background blur, which does look nice in some scenarios. The only thing I don't like about the Pocket at this stage is the autofocus. It's pretty slow compared to other cameras. Since the GoPro doesn't have focusing, everything is always in focus, but you don't get any of that nice background blur as a trade-off. The small screen on the Pocket also makes it difficult to see what's in focus, so you'll have much better results when using a smartphone screen as your viewfinder, and setting focus by tapping as and when needed. Moving on, audio quality on the Pocket is probably a little better than the GoPro, still not brilliant, but enough to get the job done clearly and get a good feel for your surroundings, thanks to a new audio algorithm. The two built-in microphones do a decent job, although I did get a lot of audio clipping at higher volumes, so to get the best results you want to attach an external microphone, which fortunately is possible albeit with an additional external adapter. Since the gimbal allows the camera module to move independently to the hand grip, we have some seriously impressive functionality added to the Pocket too. Active Track, made famous with DJI's quadcopters, is available here too and it actually works really well. Tap to select your subject and the camera will automatically follow, doing a mighty good job of it too. Better still, you don't even need your smartphone connected to use it. It's a bit better following people rather than objects, but nonetheless it pretty much creates a one-man film crew, and throughout testing it performed flawlessly. When flipping into selfie mode, it will automatically track your face without having to even switch the feature on. Currently recording in 4K 30 with face track enabled, face track does not work at 4K 60, so 4K 30 is your maximum resolution for face track, and it seems to do the job quite nicely. Keeping my hand still here as I'm just moving my head around and the camera moves around with me, follows me nicely, so it all works really well.
it can actually track up to two faces in this mode, but generally locks onto one as the master. But honestly, it works really well. An FPV mode is also available, which locks all axis, including the roll, making your footage look more like it came from a traditional action camera. All of the movements are still stabilised, but the gimbal will react much faster than in follow mode, allowing you to create some nice effects to use later in video projects. Also included is the traditional time lapse mode, speeding up footage captured over time, just like we see with most action cameras. Although the pocket also gives us motion time lapse, which in simple terms creates a standard time lapse, but moves the camera at the same time between two preset points. Simply set your start and end points and leave the pocket to do its thing in between, and the results are really good. Those into panoramic shots will be pleased to see the mode available with the pocket, with three shots taken and seamlessly stitched together, producing a 180 degree image nice and quickly, even while hand holding the device. Also available is a larger pano shot using nine images, again all seamlessly stitched together and producing an even larger image, all working wonderfully well. So, after a day's shooting we have the option of viewing content back directly on the pocket's display and although it's a tad on the small side, it's still rather sharp and easily usable. Bear in mind the pocket has no built-in speaker so you won't hear any audio, but for a quick review while out and about it works perfectly well. Alternatively, hook it up to a smartphone and view back footage on a larger screen and you'll hear the audio too. Clips load quickly and play just as smooth, no issues here at all. There are other features available in the app too, which lets you create short stories for uploading to social media and do all the editing for you. So all in all a rather simple to use, but feature rich app to complement the pocket itself. DJI really seem to have thought about everything with the pocket. It's advisable to always carry the unit in its case to avoid gimbal damage and when switching the unit off you'll find the gimbal automatically rotates itself ready to be placed into the case. A neat little trick. The case even has holes for the smartphone adapter to poke through, as well as for charging. And talking of charging, the unit features a non-removable 875mA battery, which isn't huge, but good for around 2 hours of shooting, albeit at the unit's lowest 1080p 30 resolution. Bump that up to 4K and naturally battery life is zapped much quicker. Even then it does seem to last longer than the GoPro Hero 7, and to be fair it did get me through most of the day when shooting the odd clip here and there, and switching the unit off in between. A USB charging cable is included in the package, and the unit charges from empty to 90% in an hour, so you'll be back shooting in no time. And since the USB-C charging port is at the bottom, with a USB battery bank attached, it's easy to keep using the Osmo Pocket even while charging. All in all, the DJI Osmo Pocket is the all-in-one solution for anyone who wants to capture fluid video, but doesn't want to dedicate a portion of their backpack to carrying around something much larger. It seems most would compare to the GoPro Hero 7 Black, although both have some unique features that set them apart from each other. The Hero 7 Black gives you that super wide field of view, great video quality and a super durable body, whereas the Osmo gives you better stabilisation, a more cinematic field of view, manual controls, super sharp video quality, all at a slightly lower price point. Even though DJI would like you to believe that this is a GoPro killer, the two cameras are each in their own unique category. The GoPro will be great for getting intense action shots like you see in those GoPro advertising videos. For everyday videos, vlogs, travel, cinematic short films, the Osmo Pocket will definitely be better. If I had to choose one as my only camera, as long as it's not for cinema level production, the Osmo Pocket provides fluid 4K60 recording video of a great quality, very impressive stabilisation, and a feature set including active track, all while being small enough to carry comfortably with you everywhere you go. A very impressive feat in engineering.